Hello YouTube viewers and random Iron Man fans. Today I'm very excited to be reviewing this, which is the brand new Hot Toys Diecast 1-6 scale Iron Man 3 Mark 42 armor figure, and here it is in its packaging. As you can see, it follows the red and gold colour motif of the actual suit. On this top section, a stylized image of the armour in action has been printed, which extends all the way to the sides of the packaging. Below on this red piece is written MMS197-D02, and it is the mark XLII, or 42, for those of you who don't speak Roman numeral. And it is a 1-6 scale collectible figure. Well, it is part of the Hot Toys movie Masterpiece series, so it is constructed from die-cast metal. The back features a list of the extremely talented people responsible for creating this figure, along with your box standard choking hazards and legal guff. Sliding the top and bottom sections off, we are left with a grey, sturdy styrofoam box. It is very basic and just has the mark XLII text inscribed into this front panel. Speaking of which, removing the front panel allows us to take a look at the figure. And here it is, with all of its accessories and extra components housed around it. Doesn't it look glorious? Additionally, a black tray can be pulled out from the back of the box, which contains the figure stand, instructions and batteries. But enough about the box, let's move on and take a look at the figure itself. Alrighty, so here we have the Mark 42, and oh man, this is all kinds of awesome. The sheer level of detail on display here just blows me away. Taking a look at the helmet, the face bit has these grooves on the temples and running from the eyes up past the forehead and the facial slit below. While on the sides you can make out some silver panels on the jaw area there too and indents where the pieces of armour join up at the back of the head. At the top of the torso, these silver sections jutting out from underneath the armour look excellent, especially here at the shoulder where if you look inside you can actually see the gears and cogs which work the arms. The chest naturally features the triangular arc reactor, with the detailing of its workings actually visible inside, while along the sides more armour pieces are visible. In fact, this chest piece is removable entirely, allowing you to take a look at the various servos and inner workings of the suit, which is an inspired touch. Likewise, the arms look just excellent, and like the rest of the figure, the paint apps really help make it look just like the suit seen in the movie. Some silver overlapping panels are visible on the back of the elbow, allowing Tony Stark to move his forearm, which also looks great and includes those gold wrist supports or the hand protectors, while finally the hands contain those accurate gold thumbs and forefingers with a repulsor nestled in the centre of the palm. The ab section is particularly impressive as you can really get a sense from the sculpting that this suit is made up of many small pieces of armour which connect together and expand, so these silver bits underneath all the red and gold give some added depth to the figure overall. This design is also present on the back. The top of which doesn't look too bad either, but that battery compartment could have been concealed a little bit better, and the switch is kind of obvious. Having said that, it does contain these two air brakes which are hinged so can open out, revealing these great silver pieces of overlapping panels which are moulded from die-cast metal. As for the legs, well for a die-cast figure, the legs feel the most metallic overall, as the rest of the figure's external pieces seems to have been made from plastic for the most part. These are heavy and cold to the touch, but still contain that exceptional high level of detail we've come to expect from Hot Toys. They again feature that design motif of metal plating connected together, with the silver visible underneath. The paint apps on this figure overall are just fantastic too. I love the muted gold effect against that glossy deep red design. Finally, the feet are excellent, while underneath there are a few screws and a minute amount of legal removal. So overall for detail, this is simply fascinating. It looks as though the Mark 42 suit from the movie has literally been miniaturised and sent to me, as the level of detail here is beyond exceptional. Turning to articulation, the head can do the full 360 degree exorcist twist, as well as being able to nod up and down, and move from side to side. The arms can't really turn very well at the shoulders without some of the pieces scraping together. Fortunately, however, the arms can be pulled out slightly, which frees them up and allows them to do the full 360 at the shoulder joint. This can also slightly pivot forward and back as well. A combination of two joints on the shoulder also allow the figure to extend his arm out to 90 degrees. It can also do another 360 at the top of the arm. Two joints on the elbow allow the forearm to be brought forward to around 90 degrees, while the hand and gauntlet can spin through a 360 as well. And depending on which hands have been attached to the figure, there are joints included on the fingers and thumbs, allowing them to make a fist or any other pose that you deem appropriate. There is a joint at the ab section allowing the top of the torso to pivot forward and back, side to side, and also twist around but it can't do the full 360. However, just like the shoulder, the ab wall section can be pulled out and extended. This then allows the torso to bend down further and freely pivot to the sides. This is an excellent idea, as it gives the figure more options for more dynamic display poses, while allowing it to remain tidy with fewer visible joints when kept in a more straightforward pose. 
Moving on to the legs, well I can't really move around too much, but again that extending feature has been added. First of all these two panels at the top of each leg can be lifted up, giving them much more range to kick forward and back. But on top of this, a panel on his, well, backside actually drops the legs down, which really gives them some freedom for some action packed poses. They can now kick fully forward, move back and come out at the sides to around 45 degrees. There's a slight swivel at the top of the leg. A double joint on the knee, allowing the foot to swing back, and the foot can be pulled out slightly, allowing it to pivot forward and back, and side to side, and the front of the foot can move forward and back. These hinge panels on the bottom of the leg also allow the foot to move without the joint looking too messy at the same time. So for articulation, this figure has it all, and then some. When it comes to features, the 42 offers light effects. Batteries are included with this figure, they're the tiny button cell batteries, three of which fit into the figure's head, both arms and torso. A small screwdriver is also included, allowing you to open the small panels housing the batteries. Each light is controlled independently via a switch located near to the battery compartment. My one issue here is that to activate the lights in the head, the faceplate and top portion of the helmet must be removed to access the switch. This is quite tedious, and seeing as they didn't include a face sculpt for this helmet, the switch should have just been located behind the faceplate. But apart from that, when the arc reactor, repulsors and eyes are lit up, the figure looks awesome, and when on display, the lights really give it an authentic look. Taking a look at the figure's accessories, it comes with a lot. First of all, it offers a battle damaged mode, where some pieces can be removed and replaced with broken and weathered counterparts. And I have to admit, this takes an already awesome figure and pushes it over the edge. This looks unbelievable. Starting off with the head, the scrapes and scratches in the paintwork are so realistic, it actually looks like grazed metal, while the application of this darker paint wash really sets it off. What's more is that the faceplate is removable, so taking it off reveals a sculpt of Robert Darn. Jr.'s face. This looks excellent, and it's a perfect dead ringer for Tony Stark. It has the injury effects on his face, the same as the mechanic figure, and his goatee is present on there as well. My one issue is that the hairline is perhaps a little high, making him look bald. But this is covered up by the faceplate, which is magnetised so it can sit on the top of the helmet, making it look as though it has been slid up. And look at this, even the reverse side of both clean and damaged faceplates contain detailing. How awesome is that? Unfortunately though, this head sculpt does not contain light effects for the eyes. Both shoulder armour panels can be switched out for these trashed replacements, which are made of plastic as opposed to the die-cast clean versions. On one side we get these bullet holes and a crack in the armour revealing this wire mesh underneath, while the far side features more cracks and scoring. The damaged chest plate is missing a piece revealing that servo design underneath from earlier. I love the detail on the far side here though. The damage is so realistic that it really looks like shredded and dented metal. On one arm the bicep section has been ripped off revealing the inner workings and servos beneath. Both forearm gauntlets can be swapped out for smashed up versions with the top sheeting scored off both in a very realistic looking way with more of those excellent paint apps applied to them. While finally the hand guards also have that damaged effect on them too. On top of that, one of the gauntlets can be interchanged with this variant, which is split apart, revealing a missile inside. It is stationary, but it just adds another level to the figure when it's on display. Finally, we get two sets of handguards. One set is clean, while the other is damaged. These both work in tandem with the alternate outstretched hands, so when these are connected to the figure, it looks like he's tilting his wrist back to fire a repulsor blast. And last but not least, we get a pair of hands which are permanently clenched into fists. All of these can be mixed and matched to create some very dynamic display poses. Also included with the figure is a base. Now this isn't your average Hot Toys base. It's thicker, stronger and more reinforced to help support the heavy die cast figure. Its design is kind of a mashup of the Hall of Armour and circular display plinth design seen in Iron Man 3. The pole at the back is made of metal while the large clip is still plastic but it offers the figure some excellent security when on display, especially what with the feet being held in place by these clamps. A small plaque on the front reads Marvel's Iron Man 3 and Mark XLII, while some light effects running around the edges of the base really complement the light effects of the figure. The base takes three AAA batteries which are unfortunately not included. Doing a size comparison, the Mark 42 is in scale with the other Iron Man Hot Toys figure in my collection, the Mark 4, even if it is a tiny bit bigger. It also fits in well with my Tony Stark, the Mechanic and Agent Coulson Hot Toys figures. So overall, what do I think of this figure? 
Well, this is beyond amazing. The level of detail is frankly astounding here. The attention to every component and piece of the armour is very clear, resulting in one of Hot Toys' best detailed Iron Man figures to date. The amount of articulation this figure boasts really gives me a sense of variety here, as I can put the Mark 42 on display in pretty much any exciting battle pose that I can think of. The light effects here are mandatory, but that switch inside the head can be quite cumbersome to access, and I would like to see some light-up repulsors on the bottoms of the feet at some point. The accessories are where this figure is really out of this world though, as the battle damage adds a whole new element to it, and that face sculpt is just fantastic, although I'd have loved the clean helmet to have included a Robert Downey Jr. face sculpt in there as well. As for the box, well it looks awesome, there's no way to see the figure when it's on display, and I would have at least preferred this styrofoam panel to have been made from plastic instead. But in the end, as I said, this is some of Hot Toys' best work yet. And for fans of Iron Man 3, this is the definitive figure of the Mark 42. What especially sets it off, beyond its heavy weight, what with it being made from die-cast metal, is that when it's combined with the Hot Toys Tony Stark figure and its accessories, it perfectly recreates some scenes from the movie. And so that does it for this review. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to stay subscribed for more videos and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thank you again for watching and remember to keep following the nerd. Goodbye.